for the teaching process you need some innovative things you need to introduce some innovative ideas that can create some extra interest on your student but during uh, the interruption section uh, time when uh, dr nivans uh, internet was unstable that time i mentioned that if a arts uh, teacher arts background teacher want to teach uh, something uh, scientific way to their student how they can learn so for that purpose we have some digital platforms there are plenty of resources uh, so our next speaker will talk on about that resources he is dr plavan kumar bhomik he is the assistant uh, professor in the center for the educational technology iit kharagpur so without wasting much time i want to request dr plavan kumar bhomik uh, to start your session please sir thank you uh, am i audible yes you are audible okay great thank you thank you very much thank you very much for inviting me for this webinar i thank organizer uh, the jharkhand raj college physics alumni association and of course uh, the department of physics jharkhand raj college for giving me this opportunity to talk to you uh, so the topic that i will be dealing with today is uh, the digital learning platforms for uh, future digital plat platforms for future learning uh so we were uh, doing well with our traditional setup in our classrooms until this this great pandemic happened in our generation so it's a pandemic of our generation we can say and that changed the entire scenario in in a in a um, click of a maybe within a month or so right so in that scenario we felt the need for this digital learning more so ever than earlier right so i think it is a good time to talk about what are the kind of good digital platform or digital resources that we can leverage uh, to make our uh, teaching learning process or to to continue our teaching learning process though not in a um, in a uh, way we wanted wanted to have but uh, nevertheless it can be uh, an option given that we are uh, stuck in a situation like this uh, so what i'm going to do today so i'm going to take you through uh, different initiatives uh, that uh, uh, are uh, have have uh, that are have that happened worldwide uh, but specifically i will like to focus on the initiatives that uh, have spawned from india i, I understand that there are participants from different other institutes uh, uh and 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 uh, um, i guess they will also be benefited by the wealth of uh, resources that uh, india is creating uh, for india as well as for the global population right so let me share my screen first okay uh so these are the few things uh, that i'll be talking about first i'll talk about open educational resources i guess it is uh, one of the topics that is very much pertinent to this uh, situation as uh, we want to have the resources that are made available freely so that any student from any corner can get access to this resources uh, in online as as well as offline manner uh, the second thing that uh, is there for quite some time uh, which is massive open online courses uh, which again uh, has got its own uh, flavor and own uh, benefits given this situation and uh, direct to home is another initiative uh there are many countries who have this kind of initiative but i will specifically talk about the d2h initiative in uh, india specifically this is a very good uh, platform where the students who are uh, not in a good bandwidth region they will be able to access quality educational materials through television which is uh, a really a uh, thing to consider as a uh while we are talking about including all the students depending uh, irrespective of their demography their connectivity etc and 
finally uh, we need to have a library which uh, connects all these resources together to provide uh, a unified view to the learner so that the learner can uh, get the resources from a single platform and they do not need to uh, forage through different uh, a number of platforms right so to start with uh, let me talk about the oers and the uh, and uh, their connection with uh, creative commons right so now uh, whenever we are trying to use open educational resources and this is uh, what i'm uh, uh, um, pointing out to the teachers who are really uh, motivated to uh, encash the benefits of these oers for their students they should be little bit careful why they are uh, um, taking the resources out of internet and presenting them to the students of course quality wise they should check uh, how how good is the uh, resource and whether the resource has got alignment with the student right yes i i know teachers will be doing a great job because that is uh, that uh, is the domain uh, of uh, work uh, but something uh, that i uh, like to point out why we are sharing this resources to the students right or using this resources while uh, the teacher is creating his or her own resource or learning material now we are taking the resources from the internet we need to consider that these resources they have been published by the creator with some rights right now this rights has got a legal angle now what do this uh, what does do this right say this rights tell what are the kind of activities the users can do with the uh resource that has been created by the creator right now the basic uh, action that the user can do the user can copy publish display or communicate to the others without any hindrance right so that is a right that has been assigned to the uh, user by the creator of course right secondly uh, while you are trying to share the resource with others you may have to tell that where well, this resource has been uh, adopted from a particular person or particular uh, show, source or a particular publisher so you need to attribute uh, the original work and the third thing that the user uh, can do depending on whether the creator has uh, uh, provided rights to that is either the user can use this work for commercial purpose right answer can be yes or no depending on what the creator has mentioned and the fourth thing that has to be considered uh, is that whether the uh, uh, teacher or the uh, resource creator who is reusing another resource is entitled to modify or adapt the original work right it may so happen that the creator can say no you cannot really uh, adapt it or modify it you can share it as it is right and the fifth uh, fifth uh, point is uh, the fifth uh, kind of right that can be assigned uh, to the particular resource is that uh, you can choose a license by by the way adapting or uh, you are doing an adaptation in your work so for example you are creating a learning material and you have taken a particular resource from another uh, person there are multiple things you can do you can say that well i have created my resource that resource may come under certain license uh, and that whether you can assign a new license to it that depends on whether the user or, or the creator has provided you the right right now based on all these creative commons they have formalized uh, the notion of these these rights and they have tried to uh, name certain licenses for example you can see this uh, c cross uh, um, symbol that means 
can be uh, put in public domain. So it is in public domain. So what the user can do, user can copy and publish, user uh, can use it for commercial purpose, user can modify or adapt it or change the license. But the user uh, does not need to, uh, uh, other, uh, the user does not need to attribute the creator, right? Now the second level is CC BY, so that means uh, it is in public domain, but on top of that, you make sure that you have uh, really attributed the original creator, right? Now the third level is CC BY SA. This means share, share alike. So uh, you can uh, copy it. You have to attribute the original author. Uh, you can use it for commercial purpose. You can modify your data, but you cannot change the license. You have to share it uh, in the way the original creator has shared. Right. So likewise, there are many uh, flavors of these licenses. So the point is, while the teacher is creating a resource, a new resource out of these existing open educational resources, they have to be careful um, that they are permitted to do certain actions. So I can give you a specific example. Let's say you, have, uh, uh, you are creating a video for your students and you have planned to publish that video on YouTube, right? Now, by doing so, you have used an image from the internet without looking uh, the license or the rights uh, on uh, on the image. So you have just uh, uh, um, taken that image because that, that uh, suits to your purpose and you have just used that image in your video. Now, while you upload that video uh, on the YouTube, maybe YouTube can block that video because you have, you may end up with using a copyrighted image, right? And you know what will happen, your students will not be getting access to a good quality material which you have created because of a single image. So. We need to be very careful while we are uh, uh, using resources from the internet. Now, one may ask, why do, so if you take this specific example, why we are taking an image from Google, how do we know what are the rights that are assigned to it? So there are uh, tools to do this. So maybe I can give you a demonstration. Uh, so let me share my browser. I, I can try to demonstrate the thing. Right. Well, let's say uh, uh, I want to search for photosynthesis. So I go to images. Now, there are many images you can see. Now, you cannot really take any image. So what you can do to check uh, uh, what are the rights that are assigned to the images, to click on tools. Now, under tools, you can see usage rights. So if you click on usage rights, you can see different options, not filtered by license. So all the images are having mixed license, right? Uh, so you can have copyrighted as well as free uh, images here as well. And the second is, Level for reuse with modification. So that means you can reuse the image that is coming under this category as well as you can modify it. Now the third one is level for reuse. So that means you can reuse, but maybe you may not be able to modify it. Right? And the fourth thing is level for non-commercial reuse with modification. Right? So the images that will be coming under it. Uh, you can use this for non-commercial purpose, uh, and of course, you can modify it. And finally, level for non-commercial reuse, so, which is, uh, uh, I'll say, um, uh, no, is a, uh, um, so here you don't need to, you cannot modify, it. you just can reuse, right? So what you can do, let's say I'm using this level for reuse with modification. You can see the set of images changed, right? So the idea we had uh, um, more number of images, but here the number of images has been reduced because 
in the earlier case, you did not have any restriction imposed on it, right? So this is one way uh, you can uh, really find out whether you are allowed to uh, use uh, an image from the internet or not. And let's say you want to use a YouTube video. So there in the YouTube video, under it, it, many times it is written, what is the license it is covered under? So uh, the point is, you need to be careful while you are uh, using these resources. Uh, let me share back my slides. Okay, uh, so far so good. Now, uh, now let, let me list down some of uh, very useful open educational resources in the school domain. Uh, I will not go to the individual sites, and this is uh, really a list for you. You can uh, browse it uh, when you go back to your, to, uh, go back to your uh, place after this webinar, uh, because uh, I think we are restricted on time. Uh, Wikipedia is, is a very great source of uh, knowledge, and uh, it is not like only the school uh, students or the teachers. Uh, the mm, Students and the teachers from other academic grade levels, they really use this uh, resource very frequently, very widely. OER Commons is a very nice uh, website where they have tried to integrate all the open educational resources around the world in a single place. So this is the first thing they have done. And on top of that, they have tried to align uh, individual resources with uh, the learning outcomes of this uh, particular of the selected resources right and you know these learning outcomes are becoming to be very important uh, while we are talking about digital learning now in digital learning scenario uh, you are sharing a particular resource right so in a classroom what you can say that today we are going to do this right and, and at the end of the day we will learn this right but while you are using a learning material uh, which is available digitally, it may so happen that these outcomes and learning outcomes are not really uh, explicitly mentioned. So, this OER Commons, what it does, it tags individual resources with specific learning outcomes. And these learning outcomes, they have been taken from standards like Common Core State Standard and Next Generation Science Standards. So these standards are widely used uh, uh, in US, UK, and some other countries, specifically Next Generation Science Standard. I think uh, in the Indian setting, we should also move towards the standard-based outcome, uh, learning outcome specification. And that will give the students and the users of the uh, resource a very good view of what uh, the students or the users are going to learn out of this learning material. Uh, multimedia educational resource for learning and online teaching, in short, MARLOT, uh, they host uh, multiple kinds of learning materials, starting from uh, simulation, animation, questions, uh, projects. And it is a very, very uh, nice source for uh, different kinds of uh, teaching learning materials. CK12, on top of having uh, good quality resources, they have a very nicely structured, uh, uh, so they have structured the uh, uh, repository by aligning them to topics under different subjects. And uh, the, the structure of this topic, the interconnection between these topics have been represented nicely using concept map. So they, have a very visible way to navigate the repository. So I suggest this uh, um, website for every teacher and student uh, as, as it has got a different way to visualize the learning materials. Khan Academy, I guess uh, you are all aware of, and it is very popular 
uh, among the students and the teachers uh, specifically because of the style the uh, portray their learning material so it is a kind of traditional uh, chalk and talk uh, that they are following and on top of that they have unit based or uh, module based uh, quiz uh, quiz questions that, that are very interesting and engaging for the students uh now many in many cases as uh, we do not have laboratory facility available with us at this point of time and in general for the lower grade levels we do not have the laboratory facility uh, in, in any 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 scenario forget about covid or non covid uh, situation now this can be uh, addressed by using the simulations uh, or the animations that uh, can uh, act as a surrogate of this uh, physical laboratory like at least the students can interact with different models uh, or different physics models uh, and and learn uh, the working principle of certain models or experiments or some uh tools right now uh, this fate is a very good uh, uh source of number of uh, um physics simulations and i guess they have included uh, uh some biology or i think other domain simulations but they are primarily physics simulation reports and uh, they are made available in multiple languages as well not only english uh, they have certain uh, um, simulations translated in bengali or different other languages in the world project oscar is a project by iit bombay so they they are kind of uh, offering a virtual laboratory setup where you can have you can design your experiment record your data uh, attend a quiz that is assigned uh, with a particular project and you can do many things there and finally youtube educational channel so there are plenty of youtube educational channels uh, the teachers are making good use of it uh, in this situation i know personally but again a uh, 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 word of caution is you need to check the quality of the video before sharing it to the students for in the first place and the second place you need to check uh, the licenses that are attributed to this uh, this resources in higher education let us see what are the kind of uh, open educational resources that are available internet archive is a uh, is a very big place where you can find uh, authentic books like uh, i could find very interesting books or very classical books of almost any domain right be it physics biology chemistry humanities uh, it, at almost in all domain you can find books there and uh, very classical traditional uh, also uh, uh, new books and and on top of that not only books they have also video uh, materials audio lectures etc etc Massachusetts Institute of Technology (MIT) uh, they have a repository called MIT Open Courseware, in short MIT OCW. So they have uh, courses covering multiple disciplines, uh, again engineering, science, humanities, and of course, needless to say that uh, they are being taught by the top teachers uh, in the world, right? So you know what quality they would be. Now coming to the primary uh, focus of uh, my my talk is uh, initiated by the government of India, specifically by Ministry of Education, uh, and they support uh, development of educational technology or learning platforms through a scheme called National Mission on Education through ICT. In short, NME ICT. Let, let us see what are the kind of uh, very useful platforms that have been developed under this uh, uh, mission under the aegis of uh, Ministry of Education. 
Uh, this first uh, platform that I like to talk about is Siam. Uh, uh, if we expand Siam, it will read like this: uh, Study waves of archive learning for young aspiring minds. So this Siam is uh, a portal where you can find uh, uh, multiple courses again covering almost all the disciplines you can think of. Right? And these courses they are free to access. Uh, now, these courses runs in a regular basis, and one can register for this course, enroll for this course, course uh, free of cost. But if someone wants to take uh, uh, receive a certification, for that, the student has to go to a process, right? Now, for that, they have to pay a nominal fees, and finally, they have to appear for uh, a test, which is uh, done uh, uh, in a proctored way, right? And there are various test centers they can appear in and uh, uh, appear for the test for a particular subject. And if they uh, achieve uh, up to a certain quality, they will get a certificate, right? Now, why this uh, platform is a game changer is uh, because of many, many facets it, it has. So you can think that many colleges in India, uh, they might not have been the proper infrastructure to host all the courses for their uh, students. Maybe for the lack of teachers, they do not have a particular teacher for a given subject. Uh, so in that case, what they can, they can do, they can uh, opt for this course online and certain amount of credit uh, they, uh, from their university, they, can, they will be allowed, allowed uh, the, if you take a course and get a certification, that will be mapped to the credit point or a particular grade point for, for a particular university. And this really decided uh, by the university in concern. Right? So there are many other interesting features of this. Uh, so I, I'll request you to explore this platform. NPTEL uh, is uh, again is it's called the National Program on Technology Enhanced Learning. So initially, it started uh, with uh, uh, to be the repository of uh, the courses in engineering science, but gradually it is hosting not only engineering and science, it is hosting also uh, the humanities and uh, arts and humanities subjects. Right? And this NPTEL and SIAM, they uh, collaborate very uh, neatly and you can find uh, almost all the NPTEL courses in the SIAM platform. Now, uh, we felt the necessity of having the virtual lab uh, in this particular lockdown situation where we do not have the access to the physical labs. But irrespective of uh, whether we have the access to the physical lab or not, the uh, demand for virtual labs are there for quite some time because, again, uh, all the institutes may not have the proper infrastructure, right, uh, to host all the labs. So in that case, it, it will be it will be uh, uh, very much beneficial, beneficial to the uh, uh, students or the teachers if they have access to uh, labs virtually. And uh, for that, we have got two uh, platforms developed in India. One is uh, the Virtual Labs Project. Uh, vlab.co.in and uh, another project that has been coordinated by the Amrita University, which is called Virtual Amrita Laboratories Universalizing Education or Value at the Red Amrita. And they have a nicely organized different laboratories uh, by providing simulation, the methods, the uh, procedures, the materials, uh, the, the instructions to um, record data, finally uh, quizzes. So they have structured nicely this virtual labs. Finally, these the, the D2A channels, uh, uh, and, and there are 32 channels that are dedicated specifically to disseminate educational contents. And uh, this has been distributed in different levels, of course. Uh, 
you can see the link below. It is uh, having the archive of all the um, lectures that have been hosted in the TV uh, in different time uh, periods. Uh, and it will give you an archive, and that archive will take you to the uh, appropriate YouTube link. But again, these uh, uh, 32 channels, they continuously uh, deliver different lectures by eminent faculty members around India uh, to the students through the TV channels. So in the school level, uh, there are four channels. One is dedicated to biology, channel 19, channel 20 dedicated to chemistry, channel 21 dedicated to mathematics, and channel 22 dedicated to physics. And uh, uh, there is a dedicated, uh, uh, there is a set of dedicated channel for National Institute of Open Schooling. And channel 25 is for DL8, channel 27 is for secondary school education, channel 28 is for higher secondary school education, and channel 30 is for Ganyamri. So you can visit this channel, you can see that uh, all the times you can see that uh, some faculty member is talking about a particular topic in a subject. And of course, NCRTs has a dedicated channel, which is channel 31. And the focus of this channel is school and teacher education. Uh, fortunately, we are working on a project which is called Teaching Learning Center uh, that is uh, hosted from IIT Kharagpur, uh, which is called dlc.iitkjp.ac.in. So there, we have tried to explore different pedagogic principles, like say role play, uh, drama, then you have uh, animations, project-based learning, uh, experiment-based learning. So we have created samples of uh, different kinds of pedagogy, uh, pedagogy uh, li lined contents, and uh, they can be used as examples while the teacher is creating a particular learning material. Uh, so I will not go to this uh, website. Uh, maybe I'll go to this website later. Let me talk about the other project, which is hosted in IIT Kharagpur, is coordinated by IIT Kharagpur, is the National Digital Library of India. And now you can see that uh, there are multiple resources. So you have got virtual lab, you have got the TV channels, you have got the massive open online courses, and you have got the OEs that are coming from different parts of the world. Now think of a student uh, who has got a query in mind. So for example, he wants to solve certain problems in physics. Now what the student needs to do, he needs to uh, take, take any chapter, say heat and thermodynamics. That student has to go to the particular website where uh, he or she can find the books. Then after he or she can find the books, uh, he or she needs to go to another place to see whether there are certain interesting simulations or video lectures. And he or she needs to go to uh, a place where he or she can appear for a test. Now you can see that as a student, I need to go from one website to another website. And sometimes uh, the complexity of finding materials on the web uh, web uh, may, might deter the student to explore further, right? And there, uh, uh, the role of the National Digital Library of India comes to be important. So the role of the National Digital Library of India, the objective of the National Digital Library of India, NDLI, is to collate or integrate different kinds of learning materials for different levels of learners at a single place so that they can have a unified view, the users or the students, the teachers, the lifelong learners, they can have a unified view of a wide spectrum of learning materials. Right? So at this point of time, and this project is being uh, supported by uh, the Ministry of Education and it has started back in 2015. And it was formally uh, launched in 2018 uh, um, by Sri Prakash Jabrekar. And uh, it is rapidly growing by including a number of learning materials from India as well as uh, around the world. 
in a very rapid pace. So as of now, it is hosting around five crores of content. Actually, we uh, last week we crossed five crore uh, contents. And out of this five crore contents, around 65 percent of them are freely accessible by anybody around the world. Right. Uh, so. As we are restricted in time, I do not take much time in describing the objective and the vision. Maybe I can go directly to the uh, portal to show you how you can uh, access the learning materials in different way in National Digital Library of India. So give me a second so that I can share my browser. So let me first talk about the DLC portal. So you can see that uh, Digital Learning Center project. So under this, you have got a browse uh, facility. Uh, you have OER contents. We have, along with our own uh, uh, in-house contents, we have also integrated a set of OER contents that are useful for the uh, students. But let us uh, get to the DLC contents. You can see that we have shorted the contents based on pedagogy, for example, lecture, demonstration, project-based learning, storytelling, case studies, experiential learning. So you can just go to storytelling. You can see that uh, you have a, a topic on boomerang, right? And actually, this boomerang is uh, a um, kind of artifact to describe Bernoulli's theorem. It has been nicely done there. You can explore it. There's a nice uh, animated uh, um, story which is called, uh, which is explaining rest and motion. So, again, I'll not be playing uh, here. You can explore it with your time. Now, coming to National Digital Library of India, as you can see, that it is written like one library all of India. So, it is kind of unifying the digital resources in India, right? Now, the landing page, what you can see, so there are many uh, ways you can access the library. So one way is just simply uh, put your search query, right? So let's say I search for heat and thermodynamics. So you can see you can... Uh, uh, there are multiple types of uh, resources that are uh, available here in this session. Now, what do you want to do? You can you say that I, I'm I'm uh, uh, I'm really interested in the resources that are aligned to school vertical. So, for example, nine and ten. Now you see that there are uh, different contents that are aligned to ninth and twelfth grade level students. Now, if you can click on any such uh, material. So, if you click on a link, it will get to a page which is called the content page. In the content page, you can see that the contents are nicely organized. For example, in the thermodynamics and heat engine, you have got thermodynamics and heat engine, which is a topic under it. Now, you can from this, you can go to fluids. Now, if you click on fluid, you see the fluid to be a soft topic under it, right? And you can see the relevant content that is displayed here, right? So you can search and filter the search results based on your educational need. Now you can go to, uh, again, go back to the home page. You can browse the repository by multiple ways. For example, you can browse the repository by subject. Right. Now, there are three level subject. Uh, so, so you can browse the resources in three uh, level hierarchy of subjects. So let's say you want to go for, say, natural sciences and mathematics. Under natural sciences and mathematics, you want to go to, say, physics. And under physics, you want to go to, say, magnetism. You can see there are many contents uh, that are relevant to this subject domain, but they are mixed uh, in the educational level. So you can think of having the contents that are aligned to, say, 11th and 12th level, right? You can see that you have something called JE main question paper, April 2016. Let us see what is there. 
so you can see that here we have got the question uh, uh, paper and under this you have got the question I want to have know the solution or the answer keys so you just need to click on the next uh, uh, line under it so what you can see you can see the question the answer key primary solution all the reference reading material and of course similar problems now you can see that we started with uh, just having a query and we ended up uh, in a question paper which is the question paper of jane and under this question paper you have got multiple question which is question 16 and under this question 16 you can access the primary solution the other reference uh, reading material and similar problems so that you can practice more right and this particular uh, thing, which is the answers to this J main question, has been developed in house. These solutions have, have been developed in house by the NDLI team, which is uh, uh, proving to be a very useful resource for the uh, students who are aspiring to be a peer for JE. And we have got a huge number of um, access to this uh, this this J main question and answers. Now going back to uh, this uh, landing page so you can do these activities from any page as well but i'm going to the landing page over and over again so that you can remember the landing page uh, landing page now this browse can be uh, done through multiple ways for example you can browse by source uh, so for example uh, if i do browse by source uh, uh, maybe i can go to the society and under the society, you can see that uh, there are, uh, these, these are all the movie scripts written by Shatidre, the handwritten movie scripts, those are available here. And you can uh, look for any other, like say, you want to go to this thing called Board of Secondary Education. So you can see you have the um, uh, question paper of uh, uh, history, question paper of Bengali. Uh, you can select, uh, you have to say, if you want to look for books, so you just click on books. So you get the books here, like Amade Prithibi, Amade Oiti Cho, Ohoti, Shaito Mela, Professor Shungu Diary. So you can see that uh, depending on the need of the learner, you can get access to the learning material by different ways right and not only different ways also in different languages so currently NDLI supports uh, search in three languages Hindi Bengali and uh, English and there are interfaces available I think uh, as of now 10 languages total so we are trying to include other languages in search as well as the interface uh, and but that takes uh, uh, some time to do include a language in the system and we are gradually moving towards those so the third feature which is proving to be uh, very useful in the time of pandemic is this collection so you can see the school, CPSC, examination, preparatory, engineering, science, humanities. So these are called collections and these are hand curated collections. So there are some subject matter experts who are working uh, in National Digital Library of India. So they have searched NDLI extensively and collected useful materials for particular uh, domains. Right? So for example, if I go to CBC examination preparatory, so you can see that we have got uh, the resources for class 10 uh, and class 12, right? Now you can uh, get access to these resources by source, by content type, by subject. If we go to by subject, you can see you have got uh, contents for different subjects. If we go to say uh, uh, English, so you can see that we can have uh, audio books, book, presentation, question paper, many things, right? 
Similarly, we have a school vertical. Under school vertical, you can see that we have handpicked the video lectures, we have handpicked the JE preparation materials, we have handpicked the simulations, self assignments, and others. So these are the things, these are these are called collections, and these collections have got very specific purpose and they are they are targeted for a particular population of the users, right? And they are as they're handpicked, they will be serving the need, the educational need of the students for that particular uh, domain, right? So for example, science, humanities and others. Uh, so I think uh, more or less I have uh, covered all the points that I wanted to talk to. I reserve a few minutes to uh, uh, listen to your suggestions, uh, answer to your questions if uh, the moderator allows to do so. Thank you very much. Again, I thank uh, the Jhargram Raj College Physics Alumni Association for inviting me to this seminar. And I'm looking forward to the questions from the participants. Thank you very much. Over to you. Thank you, Dr. Plavan Kumar Bhormik, for your very nice talk. And I believe that during this pandemic situation, this is the most needed seminar because not only for the students, but also the, for the teacher community. They can learn something new, they can plan something new for their students. Now, uh, the floor is open for the question. I don't want to ask any individual you, individually anyone, but I want to request you, all of you to raise your hand uh, using the uh, raise hand option in the Zoom. Then I can go directly to you. And one more thing I want to ask Dr. Plavun Kumar Bhomik that somebody, uh, mm -hmm. I came to know that you have some other meeting after this session. So uh, yeah. you, you can, you can, you can uh, mention to us anytime if it's, uh, if you reach the time, okay? Yeah, yeah. So I have got a couple of minutes. Okay. I have, I have, I have uh, put a message to them that I will be late for a few minutes. Thank you, Please. thank you so much, sir. Thank but you. So I, much. I, 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 wanted to interact with the participants. That's sure, important. sure, sure. So I think let me ask uh, Dr. Minmay Hota if you can hear me. Uh, can you please unmute your mic? And if you have any question, you can ask uh, to Dr. Plavan Kumar Bhomik directly. Yes, can you please unmute your mic? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear yeah. you. Please go on. Uh, well, uh, Professor Bhomik, we are very much thankful for your talk. It is quite helpful for uh, all the educational head like in, a, in, in West Bengal and uh, any other part of it world and uh, I am asking one question that how uh, we can uh, involve our student to search educational content effectively uh, because uh, they are not acquainted with this platform and uh, from where they can start. Okay, uh, thank you. I, I think uh, a good starting point can be National Digital Library of India because it is made for primarily Indian population. And uh, the resources that are relevant to different educational boards that are already there in the uh, library. So they can get access to the materials that are uh, tied to their curriculum in the first place, as well as the, the, the resources that are uh, not there in their curriculum, but at the same time would be aligned to their interest and interesting to them. Right? Uh, so I think NDLI would be a very good starting point because it has it is meant to be the repository of the educational materials. Now one can argue that well, so there are search engines, uh, there are several search engines. One can go go to there and uh, try to find the resources. Now the search engines they are doing a very uh, uh, 
useful job or effective job for the uh, common people but they are general purpose search engines they are not really uh, aligned to or they, 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 they do not align themselves to only to the educational materials they keep in their repository all sorts of materials and that's why you can see that they do not have the filter options uh, that are particularly relevant to the educational domain or academic domain right well thank you uh, may i ask any other participant to raise your hand please then we can go to you and you can ask your question okay uh, uh, mr sandeep ghosh can you please unmute your mic yes you are unmuted you can ask the question directly now shubhomik yeah thank you for your presentation i have already greatly experienced through your presentation which is fluent lucid and no doubt beneficial to all of us now my question is the digital platform of learning is certainly going to be a pivotal platform in the horizon of teaching learning process now how effective will it be in the domain of assessment procedure well yeah so this is a, a real point of concern and thank you for asking this question uh as of now uh, our assessment has been simply like you have a set of topics that you discuss in the class and you ask questions about those topics mostly uh, they involve the recall of the students like how well the student can remember right? and and in certain times how well they solve certain problems right now one thing uh, so there are the different digital platforms that are coming up to uh, solve the issue of different other different challenges in online testing and i'm sure that they will do a good job so the platforms will be there as a matter of fact there are many platforms for example in moodle you can take the tests right uh, it has got options like uh, you can um, say you have uh, 50 students right and you don't want that the students will receive the same question paper so what you can do you can create a question bank of say 100 questions and shuffle the questions randomly and assign create a set of five uh, questions five question papers and assign them randomly to the students so you can do many things to make sure that the students they uh, adopt uh, some fair means right uh the point uh, that i like to raise is something different so the online platforms will be there and they will be uh, helping you out in conducting the online tests as a matter of fact this gate and other examinations they are happening online but i think i should ask a question to the inter teaching community do we need to rethink our way of assessment so what we are really assessing we are assessing the how the students can remember something can we go beyond that can we set a question which will engage them to think right so in in various ways we uh, do that for example we throw some open questions so the answer to this question can be many open means that it is not uh, it is not like it has not been solved but open means the question might have multiple answers and all the answers will might be true right but in this process you need to know that how the students students are following the process of problem solving how the students are arguing or standing by their hypothesis or solution whether they are able to explain the solution properly and whether they can collaborate with the other students to find a solution to the problem i think there comes the relevance of this uh, argument driven inquiry so the process of inquiry is coming up to be very important in the coming century i think anirban has uh, talked about the 
benefits of adopting a inquiry based pedagogy in your classroom i think that is true also for assessment my suggestion would be do not only think for, for assessing recall level uh, of the student also think to assess uh, is other cognitive uh, capabilities like um, say synthesizing analyzing interpreting and archive okay thank you dr homik i have one quick question for you uh, as we all understand that digital platform is very much important for present at situation and also for the future but a country like india where we have many places where forget about 4g 3g we don't have even 2g what about those student who cannot purchase a android mobile phone who do not have access to a good uh, television because they don't have that much infrastructure in their villages they don't have that much resources so what could be the solution for them because at this time they cannot go to the school or colleges do you have any comment on this well i do not have a very good answer to this because you know <laughs> so uh, uh, the point is uh, the government they are taking up certain policies which will uh, try to uh, uh, address this kind of uh, difficulties that the students are facing but again i i again i will come back to the resources like uh, direct to home channels they are available through television and nowadays every home at least has a television i i not say every home at, or at most of the homes they have a television and from through television the the, the quality learning materials they can reach to the students okay thank you and one more thing i want to point out uh, here that at the beginning of your talk you mentioned about the copyright issue i think this is uh, must needed information for all the teacher who are nowadays preparing their uh, youtube videos or the presentation for their student they must need to be very careful uh, before collecting their uh, sources from some other uh, inter some internet platform or some from any other people because if they do this thing without proper permission then youtube can block their channel if they do repeatedly do this thing three times so please be careful all the teachers